And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game, M-U-L-E, the board game. Uh, multiple use labor uh, equipment, I think is the what it stands for. Now there's a good chance half of you are like, whoa, because you've played the Mule computer game that came out many years ago, and the other half of you have no idea what we're talking about. Or maybe you do know what, but you've never played it. I fall into the camp of people who know what the game is, and know a little bit about it, but never actually played the game. I did play the game with both Mule fans and people who did not play the game. I know that Mule was always considered to be essentially a board game on the computer. It was an economic style game. Anytime a board game comes out with some of the similar things, people say, oh, that's kind of like Mule. Well, this one better really be like Mule, right? Well, let's take a look at it from my perspective of a game. Over the course of this game, players are trying to get the most money, which is shaped in all sorts of odd shapes and colors. And you're going to be doing that by building different areas down here. You're going to be pulling land off the planet Irata. And there's two games here. There's a basic and there's an advanced game. In a basic game, each turn, you'll be taking land off here. You'll actually you'll start with some land on here. Um, but you'll be taking land and placing it, like if you pull off a blue square, you put it on a blue square. If you pull off a white square, you put it on a white square. Some of it is mountains, some of it is hills, and some of it is plains. You'll notice there's a question mark on every side. It's because each question mark on the other side has zero, one, two, or even three of the purple type. But you don't know what those are when you take them. You're not allowed to look at them either. You'll put them here. And so players are going to start with a couple lands, and then players are going to be taking actions to do different things over the course of each game. Players are going to be doing actions with food uh, on the player's turn, and you'll notice there's different resources. There's food, there's energy, there's smith ore, which is some blue thing, and there's crystite, which is purple. Um, and you can, you can have a certain amount of them, but you're going to be using the food mostly to take different actions on your turns. On your turn, you can take one food action, or you can do two at a time, and you'll keep going, and everyone can have up to three different actions. Some of the actions require two food, um, and it depends what you're going to do. Most of the time, what you're going to want to do is, when you have a land out here, you're going to want to get that land activated. And to do that, you're going to need to buy a mule. Now, mules are what the game is based on. Here you can see them here with their faded stickers. Uh, mules are actually the other side of Smithor. But when you buy a mule, you're going to take a mule and you're going to stick it on your land. Now the price for buying and selling the different resources when it comes up is here on the board. At the beginning of the game it's going to start here, but as the game goes by, these prices may and well they will fluctuate. But when you buy a mule, you are going to put that mule on your land and then you're going to rotate the land to whatever you want that mule to produce. So this land can produce three energy or two food and that's it. I can put it like this here with the question mark, which means at the end of the round, I'll flip it over and whew, now I'm going to be producing one Christite at the end of every turn. So you're going to have mules. Now, if your mule is not producing energy, you're also going to have to pay an energy or else your mules won't work each turn. So you're going to need to keep energy to keep your mules going. You're going to need to be getting food so that you have enough actions that you can take. And you're going to want to smith ore and Christite because they're the best things that you can sell. So the actions that a player can take will be uh, placing mules out, maybe moving a mule from one land to another land. If the land has a blue or red background, it costs more food to be able to do that, to rotate um, one of these to a, a new facing. And also sometimes just to get money. Now there are two ways to get money. You can just go gambling, in which case you win and you get five, or you can always hunt the wumpus, in which case you'll turn over one of these cards, ignore everything else on it, and look in the top corner Nope, there's no Wumpus there. None there. Oh wait, never mind. There he was. He's hard to see. So when you find him, you get 10 money. And you can only do that once for your actions. Once you find him, you can't get him again. But that's another thing that you can do with your actions. Hunt the Wumpus. Uh, gamble at the pub. You can also take two of your lands and for an action, look at the other side of them to see what they are. To see if they're worth flipping over like this one here is not. 
And uh, so you're going to be taking these actions when you're done. At the end of an action, players are going to have to use any food that they put here goes away. They have to pay an energy for each meal that's not producing energy. Then any every other food that's left over is gone. Every every fourth energy is gone, and Chris Knight and Smith or over 12 are gone too. There's a lot of spoilage in this game. You can only keep so much. Players will then produce, and then you will fix the pricing of this chart. Now the pricing here really depends on how much the players have and how much is in the bank essentially here. You're also going to be turning over a production card each turn, which is going to tell you what the price of purple is. Here purple is four. It's going to go up and down purple randomly based on these cards. This is also a special effect that will do something here. This adds two to all energy production values of all lands. So it gives you more energy that turn. Sometimes these events are good, sometimes they are bad. But the price here is going to be affected, and again, each of them is like their own thing. For example, food. Each colonist that has less than four food makes the price of food go up one. However, it goes minus one for each food that's in here. Now, there are cards that can clear all the food out of the bank or all the, all the tokens out of the bank completely. So these are going to go. The only one that's tied to the card is the purple one. All players are then going to simultaneously decide whether they are going to buy or sell food. And they have a seller or buyer token, so they'll pick it. And then you can sell food to other players, or you can sell it to the bank. And if you buy food, or, or buy stuff, not just food, energy, Chris Slater, or Smith, or you can buy from the bank, or you can buy from other players. Now, at the end of each round, players are going to be ranked by how much money everyone has. And these are important where the rankings are because they determine who buys stuff first, who can sell first, who has the first priority each round to take new land. And that can be important. But whoever has the highest ranking, which means you have the lowest score, um, is going to draw a good event card, this lucky event. Something good, for example, here, you give to someone that they have one to four lands, they get $7. If they have five or more lands, they get $15. And you pick the person you give this to. You can't keep it yourself. So I'm, whoever has the most money, as in whoever's in ranking one, sorry, the most money, um, the most points is going to get this card. They have to give it to another player. They can't keep it themselves, so they give it to somebody. Whoever they give that to gets that event. Then that person's going to draw an unlucky event. And this is something bad, and they give this to whoever they want. And this bad effect will happen to that person, and then you go on. You start another round, and you keep going. And after eight rounds of doing this, you count up all your money, and whoever has the most is the winner. There's also... A couple other things or special powers you can give to each of the players uh, depending on what aliens they pick. Players also start with some cards depending on whether they're playing the basic or beginning. Here they can auction off a land, an extra land in a tournament style game. In the basic and tournament style game you can get two energy or two food if you have less than all the other players. Kind of like a welfare style card. But that's how it works. So I played this game with people who like the computer game mule. And it was very nostalgic for them. Oh, I remember this, oh, I remember that, oh, just like the computer game, blah, blah, blah. So I think it's safe to say, if you like mule the computer game, you like mule the board game. Great. But what about it as a game itself? Well, first of all, I like the production. I like the artwork, I like the way everything looks. I think it's funny that they have those big fat discs that are five of the smaller discs, even though they're hardly ever used because you never keep that many of a disc around and you're usually spending discs all over the place anyway. But there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of production. There's a lot of things in the thing. The iconography is simple to understand. It's easy to play. At its core, Mule is an economic game. You are going to buy low, sell high. Or in this case, produce and sell as high as you can. It's interesting to Christite, the purple resource, it varies in how it sells. Those event cards keep track of how many turns you have on the game. And the final event card says the ship has come or whatever. And there's four different ones, so you're never quite sure what the purple price is going to be at the end of the game. So it might be like, ah, it's selling for seven. Should I sell it now? It might go higher, and you kind of have some guesswork there. But with the rest of them, you can kind of control the, the ebb and the flow of the price of them. Really, blue and purple is where you're going to get your money from. So there's this pretty strong economic game, and it, it, I like it. You know, get these land, put mules on them, pay energy to keep the mules going, um, maneuver them around, produce different things, sell those things, and so on and so forth. Then they take a fire hose of randomness and <laughs> fill the game up with that. Hunting the Wampus, $10. $10. That's a decent amount of money in this game. And it's completely random. <laughs> so you can do it and get the money or not. 
Um, it's fun, I guess, to flip a card and see if you get the Wampus. But it, and, it, and it has nostalgia, but as a game mechanism, it's pretty random. And then the events can be random. Oh, there's extra crops this turn, or there's no crops, or the whole store has been wiped out, or this has happened. And those will just throw a, a loophole and maybe into your specific strategy. But the biggest randomness of the game are those positive and negative cards. And I have to say, it's the one mechanism I don't like. Now, they say, if you don't like this mechanism, you can just basically give them out randomly, as if that's better. Hey, it's your turn to randomly get slapped by the game. Giving the card to the person in the lead and saying, here's a good card, play it on someone else. Okay, fine, I'll pick the person in last place, probably. But then they get to give a bad card to someone else. So every time, as I've seen, the person who gets that card says, I'll give you a good card as long as you don't play the bad card on me. Which puts that person in the situation of either playing a bad card on someone else or playing it on the obvious leader. I just, ah, I hate that mechanism. That stuff, it just doesn't jive with me. It, it's basically, it's, it's like, hey, are you winning? Give something good to somebody else and then expect a punch in the face. That's what you get for winning. That's, I, I hate artificial catch-up mechanisms. And this one just, it just, it gives this whole take that element to the game. Wow, do I dislike that whole mechanism. So some people will like it though, and it's not that big of a deal. But, and it doesn't actually destroy my liking of the game. Although it drops me from saying the game is great to that the game is merely good. It really knocks it down that far. Now, playing the basic game or the tournament game, this is one of the few times where basic game's fine. The whole tournament, the extra stuff, the special abilities, you can knock all that out. You're getting a lot of fun. And the game goes on just long enough, and you're like, is it over yet? Oh, yes, it is. And then that's kind of where you want it to be. So I don't know, though, who the audience for this is. I like it, yes. I love economic games with some smattering of randomness. There's a decent amount in this one, though. And... I don't mind the randomness, if there's a lot of it, but then the game should be shorter. I just don't know where this one fits. Uh, it feels like they really tried to remain true to Mule the computer game, and that's fine, but I think some of the things I might have cut out. I definitely would have cut out those negative and good cards, and I might have thought a little bit, and it just there's a little bit too much computing to figure out what the price of. Okay, who has less than four food? Okay, you have, okay, now we have the food from the store, and that's the new price. Why not just put those in a card too and say food goes up one, energy goes down two? I think that might have just made it smoother and more uh, kind of streamlined. So, yeah, I'm going to recommend this, but I, I put the huge thing, try before you play it, really. I like it, but I don't love it. I like it and I play it, but I'll grumble about the events while I play it. But still have a good time because I think underneath it there's a solid uh, Euro game. I think it could have been much better, though. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Ish. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.